Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to another fireside chat as we uh, continue to get these going again. Uh, the idea is that uh, Franklin Roosevelt, when he first took office back in 1933, uh, uh, he began doing fireside chats. He had inherited a, a country that was in dire straits and they didn't understand the things that were going on. So in, in his first, actually in his first fireside chat that he spoke to the American people, he talked about banking. And he just started walking through all the information people needed to know about banking because most people didn't understand it. Now, I'm not going to do that because most of you probably understand banking better than I do. But I do understand some things about faith and about the Bible. And I thought it would be good, as FDR did, to give encouragement and information. Let me do that as well in our faith journey. Let me give some encouragement and information. And so, um, so as we go through these, uh, well, I thought I'd give some information about how do we keep growing spiritually and how, do we, how are we in relationship with our Heavenly Father through His Son? How do we do those things? And so uh, one of the things that grabbed my attention recently was I was doing my devotions. And, and uh, just so you know, I do uh, multiple devotions every day. That's not to impress you. That's to let you know that that's what I need and I need to keep growing and need to have that uh, faith base uh, to continue to grow. So in one of my devotions, I was reminded of a story from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And Jehoshaphat was the king at that time. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, I'm going to have a baby soon. I should name my kid Jehoshaphat. Well, I'm not sure that's a great idea. He was a godly man, but he had some moral struggles as well. So maybe hold off on Jehoshaphat at this point until you read all the stories. But Anyway, so Jehoshaphat is king of Israel, and uh, he finds out he has messengers telling him that uh, he has enemies on the way. They're on the move. They're coming from the south, southeast, and uh, up past the Dead Sea, and they're uh, camp encamped at En Gedi, and they're coming to Jerusalem, and they're huge. And the messengers are saying, Jehoshaphat, you're not going to be able to get your armies ready to be able to defeat this army. You're in trouble. They're coming and they're close. And so Jehoshaphat immediately went back to God and he said, uh, he started praying and saying, God, you're the one who rescued us from the wilderness. You brought us into this promised land. It's your promised land. And we need to lean on you. And he invited all the people around him to pray and fast. He said, we don't know what's coming. <laughs> See if this sounds familiar. We don't know what's coming. So in these moments, we need to praise our Heavenly Father. In these moments, we need to make sure that our Heavenly Father is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and He is number one. And so we need to worship. So he invited all those around him to pray and to fast. And uh, as he was meeting with people and warning them and saying, you know, we, we have enemies on their way, but we, we trust that God's still in control. Well, one of the men in the group spoke up, and he said, um, I, I think I have a word from the Lord. We're not even going to have to fight our enemies. We need to get ready for battle, but... But we're not even going to have to fight them. And long story short, and again, I'll let you read Second Chronicles chapter 20, but long story short, what happened was as they prayed and praised and they headed out to the battlefield, well, as they headed out to the battlefield, you know what they did? They put the praise band in the front. Like they sent singers out into the front to sing praises to God. Like their number one line of defense was, we're going to praise our Heavenly Father who is in control of all of it. And they did. And they went singing into battle. But what they found out was as they started praising God, what was happening on the battle or, or with their enemies. Now, their enemies, it was three different nations that had come together and gathered up and said, let's go defeat Israel. And they started working together to, to build this huge army and come after Israel. But when the Israelite people started praising God and they weren't even in, in sight of the other armies. What was happening with the other armies was they turned against each other. And there's a way that they did that, and again, I'll let you read it, but they turned against each other. They ended up killing each other off. So by the time the Israelites met up with um, their enemy, they were all gone. They were all dead on the field because they defeated each other. God had taken charge, and it was over before it even started. So I think we just need to remember, even in these moments, and we're reminded of that. There's a couple different stories in Scripture. I love them. But there's those stories where God's just in charge. 
Could Jehoshaphat take credit for that victory? Nope. Could any of the people of Israel take credit for that victory? Nope. It was all about God. It was all about his victory. And what we find is praise goes before victory. Praise goes before victory. Well, as we head towards Easter, let me just remind us of the time uh, when Jesus met with his disciples just before he was arrested. One of the things he had them do as they were leaving the upper room and heading to the Garden of Gethsemane was they sang a hymn together. They sang praise to God because Jesus knew, I'm going to go through some hard times, but we're going to praise God anyway because in the end, I know who wins. God's going to get the victory. And so I would just encourage us, there's some information. Praise comes before the victory. When we glorify God, boy, everything gets better. And so let me encourage you to praise, worship. Now, I don't know if you need to. If, if you can, that's great. You should be walking around singing praise songs, okay? But that's not all of it. When we worship, when we praise, well, that's everything about us. If you need to pray and fast, pray and fast. I'm doing so in certain ways right now. But pray and fast in these times for our country. But pray and fast for Christ's kingdom that he would be glorified. So pray and fast, but also sing praises. But there's another way we worship, and that's in our everyday lives, with our attitudes and our actions and our words. Are they glorifying to God? We need to check ourselves. But the information is, glorify God in everything that we do, and the victory will not be ours, but it'll be his. All right. Uh, we will do another fireside chat. I hope this is helpful again. We'll do another fire, fireside chat this Saturday, this coming Saturday, which is April 4th, I think. Um, but we'll do that this Saturday, and then we're going to worship again on Sunday, and that'll be a, a live cast. So you can check out our website, bmzchurch.org, and find that information. Um, also keep an eye on us here on Facebook, and you'll find more fireside chats. Hey, I love being your pastor, and I'm blessed by it. I certainly don't deserve it, but only by God's grace. But I am thrilled to be your pastor. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. And uh, let's just keep praying for each other.